All right, hello. So I've had a lifelong fascination with how we organize, how we humans work together to express some work or some purpose in the world. And I'd like to start by sharing a story, <clears throat> a bit about my journey. Um, it's a story that's, that's true, and it's become a bit of a metaphor for my own, my own path. Uh, I have a private pilot's license. And when I was first learning to fly, I had a rather harrowing experience. Uh, I, I'm up in the plane. I'm still a student pilot. I have 20-some hours of flight time. Uh, yes, they let you fly a plane alone with 20-some hours of, of practice. So I'm up in this plane. It's my first cross-country solo flight. So the first time I'm flying hundreds of miles away from home with no instructor with me. And I'm all ready for the journey. I go up. I start flying, a little nervous. And the low-voltage light comes on. Uh, they don't teach you much about how the plane works, right? <laughs> I barely know how to fly the thing. So, you know, what do I do? Well, my first instinct is to, you know, tap the low voltage light, but that doesn't change anything. Uh, my next instinct is to, to check my other instruments, see if there's a, a big problem here, right? So one by one, I check all of my other instruments. The altimeter says, you're not losing altitude. There's nothing wrong, right? The navigation aid says, you're perfectly on course. Congratulations, everything's fine. The airspeed indicator says you're not losing speed, you're flying fast, everything's great. So I let those other instruments outvote the low voltage light. You know, I figured nothing else is reporting anything anomalous. It must not be that big of a problem, right? Uh, that was a really bad idea. <laughs> Turns out, who would have thought that low voltage light is actually tuned in to different information than every other instrument on that control panel? Oops. Um, I nearly crashed the plane that day. And uh, fortunately, I did make it down. There were some uh, steps in the, the middle there I'll skip for you. But I made it down. And after the adrenaline wears off, it occurs to me, we do this in our organizations all the time. Right? When we humans show up in organizations, we become the sensors, the instruments, for that organization's flight towards its purpose. We sense reality on its behalf. It is through us that it becomes aware of whatever it needs to deal with or do in the world. And we humans are different, and we sense different things. We have different backgrounds, different types, different talents. We sense different things. And it's sometimes something sensed by only one person or by the minority that's critical to integrate into how we proceed. And we often ignore them. And this really echoed my experience uh, back when I worked in more conventional organizations. Uh, that was my experience. I showed up in a company. I wanted to be a sensor for this company. I wanted to be an instrument. I, I sensed reality, and I wanted to do something with it. And I'm sure all of you have had the experience of going into some organization somewhere and sensing something important. Right? Maybe it's a hole in a process or a way to improve something, right? uh, something that's not working as well as it could be, something slipping through the cracks. And I'd often have those experiences, but have nothing I could do to act on them. Right? There'd be no way to integrate that into the organization. Um, I, in fact, I learned early on that uh, if the boss didn't sense it, right, I wasn't going to get it processed. <laughs> right? Have you ever, ever seen that? You, know, you sense something important, but the boss just doesn't see it. Good luck. That shuts down the organization's capacity to integrate and harness whatever it was that I tuned into. If I'm the low voltage light, we're in trouble. So my quest, quest since then has been, how can we humans show up as sensors for our organizations? And uh, I did the only logical thing. I was, this is more personal. Now. How can I show up and be a sensor for organization? The only logical thing, once I realized that anything I sensed that the boss didn't wasn't going to get addressed, uh, well, I became a boss, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's nice and simple. Now <laughs> I get to, to really run things the way I think they should be, you know. Uh, and unfortunately, I realized there was still another boss, you know. So after climbing the, the corporate ladder a bit, um, I, I got fed up with that and realized, all right, the only way I'm really going to be able to process anything I sense is if I drop out of this whole game and start my own company where I get to be the CEO at the top and now there's no boss getting in the way of processing whatever it is I'm sensing. Uh, so I did that. I started a software company and built it over many years. And uh, you know, at first that worked great. I could get a lot of the, the stuff I sensed processed. But then something unfortunate happened. I realized, well, 
I'm not even able to, even as the CEO, as this company's growing, I'm not even able to take everything that I see and get it processed. The systems are not responsive enough. Right? The way we've structured and built our organizations today doesn't let me, even as the CEO, get everything I sense integrated and harnessed and processed. And that wasn't actually the, the worst of it. The far, far more painful realization was I had just built the very system that I had struggled so long <laughs> and tried to move past, right? <laughs> now, everyone else in that company didn't get whatever it was that they could tune into and sense, harnessed and integrated, unless I saw it. And no matter how much I might work on myself, focus on my own development, try to be the most empowering servant leader I can be, the reality is I'm still a human. I still have bad days. I still miss things. Right? And I had built the very system that I had tried to escape. So, my question then shifted a bit. It became, how do I build something different? How do I build a system where that isn't the case, where anything sensed by anyone can integrate and, and change the organization to help it better express whatever work it's doing in the world? So, one of the things we realized is there's incredible energy there in the, the things we sense. When we tune into a gap, between where we are and what could be. Right? We call this a tension because we often sense it as tension. Right? That it's, it's not just intellectual, it's that feeling in your gut, the frustration that comes when you see a process that you know could be better. Right? Or you're banging your head into the same damn problem multiple times. You feel tense, you feel this tension about it. It could also be an opportunity, something exciting, but it's this gap between where we are and where you sense we could be. And just like a rubber band stretched between two points, there is such energy there. Although we often experience it as a negative, uh, I don't mean it that way at all. And, and if we can do something with it, it becomes energy, not frustration. Right? The root of the word tension in Latin, tensera, means to stretch. It's a stretch. So how can we power an organization, fuel its continual evolution, uh, its continual updating how it works and how we work together based on these tensions that we sense. So interesting question, hard, hard thing to do, and uh, we tried a lot of things. So we experimented over years. We tried running an organization via consensus. Um, seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> it was a complete disaster. Uh, if you, you ever want to sit in long, painful meetings all the time and never get anything done, try running your organization with consensus. Um, what I realized was there's a big difference between having a voice and actually being able to do something with your voice. Being able to actually process everything you sense into some kind of meaningful change. Consensus didn't do it. In fact, often it would result in long painful meetings where we all tried to get everyone to see it the same way. Uh, I don't want my low voltage light to have to see things the same way as my fuel gauge. That's, I, I don't need that and it's not a healthy uh, system. In fact, I want to let each of them sense what they can sense best and all integrate into the flight plan. So how can we have an organization where any tension sensed by anyone, anywhere in the company, has some place to go to get rapidly and reliably processed into meaningful change? That was the, the question. Consensus didn't work, so we tried other things. And uh, we started finding uh, approaches. We started coming up with something. And one of the first things we realized on that journey is uh, we actually need to harness autocratic authority, the very thing we moved away from in the beginning. Right? Autocratic authority, because if we're sensing reality on behalf of the organization and we want to be dynamic and fast and responsive, which we have to be to process everything everyone senses, most of the things we sense, we need to, to act on locally. We need to be not just sensors, but actors in this system. And to do that, we need the authority to act without having to go to a painful meeting and try to get everybody bought in to every decision you want to make. In other words, we need to be a lot more like cells in the human body. Each one needs a clear boundary within which it has autonomy, it has authority. But what you don't see is a CEO cell, right? a manager cell directing the others what to do. Each cell has its own autonomy, but it's distributed. That's the direction we moved in, a system where everybody has autocratic authority, but they know the bounds of their authority. They know the interconnections. They know when they have to get somebody else's input 
or when they have to integrate with someone, they know the bounds of their authority and the connections. They know what they can expect of each other. And in most organizations, we have managers to fill the central point to do that, to align all of us and to distribute authority. But we've already covered the limits of that. So how can we do that without managers in the way? Well, for that, we need a process. If we don't have managers to align and integrate, we need a process which aligns and integrates. A process which lets each of us be a sovereign, autonomous agent on behalf of this organization and its purpose and integrate. In other words, we need something that's a lot less like a feudal hierarchy and a lot more like a constitutional entity. And that's exactly what we have. So uh, in my organization I work in every day, I get to experience this. It's uh, quite liberating. Uh, in my organization now, we have no CEO. We have no managers. Every individual partner in that firm has real authority that no one else can trump, but it's distributed. We each have different authority, and we know the bounds and the limits of each. And we have a constitution that defines how we integrate together. A constitution that defines a governance process, which is not governance of the people, by the people, for the people, but rather is governance of the organization through the people as censors for the purpose, whatever it is we're here to do together. And when we have that kind of tangible system, real processes that hold and distribute real authority and integrate us and figure out how do we need to interconnect and align expectations, when that process allows everyone to have a voice for the sake of the purpose, and when you have a process to integrate anything you sense, anything you sense whatsoever, any constraint on expressing this, this purpose in the world, and you can integrate it and change and reshape the organization dynamically in real time, reshape how we work together, what authority everyone has. You've got a system that's dramatically more responsive and adaptable without the waste of managers in the way limiting what tensions you can process. All of this we've captured in what we call a new social technology for organizations. It's a new operating system. It's tangible. That constitution's available on our website, and you can find it. Um, you can find organizations running with it all over the world now. It's spreading. It's called Holacracy. You can find more at our website, holacracy.org, and learn a bit more about how this system aligns us to each, uh, to the purpose, each of us to the purpose, while giving us the freedom and autonomy, and yet an integrated whole. Thank you.